Hi, my name is Jack Hickey and I'm an artist. I live in the small town of Cove on the south coast of Ireland and from a young age I always had an interest in art. So in 2007 I enrolled in Crawford Art College, not too far from here. While there I was heavily influenced by photography and film, but painting and oil and canvas painting in particular always remained my passion. The style I would be known for or recognized for would be uh, described as photorealism or hyperrealism. I prefer to just call it realism because a painting in the flesh and a photograph are two completely different things, even if they look similar. And I would, inv I would invite you, the audience, in your free time over the event to come up and have a look at the work and see what you think. So, why become an artist? Well, the simplest answer to that is to communicate. You don't become an artist to become rich, trust me. <laughs> you become an artist because you want to communicate, that you have an idea to share, you have an emotion to share. Even if we date way back to our ancient ancestors who drew on cave walls, they were communicating through imagery. If you take a baby infant or a toddler who points before they can learn to speak, they point at an object, whether it be a juice or a sweet, what they're doing is they're framing the image. They're taking mental pictures and learning. So they are also communicating through imagery. And today, we've become even more successful at communicating through imagery. And the easiest example for me to explain this is through the emoji. Everyone understands a smiley face, everyone understands a sad face, everyone understands a thumbs up, and everyone understands a thumbs down. So, if the goal of an artist is to communicate, then what is their role? And if you take what I do, which is oil on canvas painting, yes, painting, not photographs, just to clarify, at its height was back towards the end of the Renaissance, and it continued, the popularity continued through the 16th, 17th, and 18th century. During this time, the camera had not yet been invented, and mass literacy hadn't been achieved. So the artistic image became an important document and record, depicting position, uh, possession, status, quite similar to the portraits that we have behind here. So the work became more representational. We continue this out of tradition today, but back then it was a necessity. The artist's role then was effectively a PR consultant, if you will. Later on, at the 19th century, the camera was invented. This changed the art and it changed painting in particular. It became more expressive it became more experimental. The artists started looking inward and projecting themselves rather than doing work for the client. So, what is the role of an artist today? And for me, the easiest way for me to explain it or what I think of it as is someone who heightens the awareness of the population. That doesn't necessarily need to be something groundbreaking that can be something subtle, but it definitely has to connect with the audience and evoke some sort of emotion. I created this painting as a result of the crisis that was happening in Ireland with homelessness. This was me effectively heightening the awareness of the population. But I wasn't doing it through doing portraits of homeless people because to me I, I was kind of detached from it, it was different. Uh, I didn't feel their pain or I didn't feel what it was like. So by creating a painting like this, it's kind of commenting on it but without being judgmental I suppose. So. What's it like for a modern artist growing up in a modern society? Well, like many aspects of our life, technology has changed everything. And the art practice 
is definitely the same. Never has it been easier to create, communicate, and distribute your work as an artist. Since the invention of the internet and accessible platforms like YouTube, Flickr, Instagram, Facebook, they've all made it easier for an artist to have an audience so that they can promote their work. So we've got more artists creating more work being seen by more people. Great. The only problem with that, or the associated challenge is, with so much content, with so much imagery, how do you rise to the top? How do you stand out from the crowd? And for a young, serious artist trying to get noticed can be difficult. So how do you make the ordinary extraordinary? And the only way I can allude to that is through my own practice. I paint realistic, everyday scenes. There's nothing too extraordinary about that. But context is everything. And in a world where we are bombarded by imagery daily, making the conscious decision to create a piece of artwork takes time, effort, and commitment. The detail that you see in my work or the technical aspects to my work, for me, is just a personal challenge and like the icing on a cake. But like any great piece of artwork, it needs layers. Like the light that hits the prism and casts a layer of color, a painting also needs to have layers so that the viewer can investigate, ask questions, try and find answers as they go. So, traveling on this artistic journey, each painting to me represents a kind of breadcrumb. These breadcrumbs create a path depicting time, place, and subject. My goal is that each breadcrumb will contribute to a cohesive whole, finally resulting in a body of work from, for, and about my generation. My legacy. My stamp on the world. Now, in recent years, I have received some success. In 2007, I won the Hennessy Portrait Prize. I received substantial prize money and promotion over many different outlets. But the most important part was receiving a commission from the National Gallery. To know that one of your pieces of artwork is going to be in the same building of artists that you studied and admired growing up was a huge personal achievement for me. Artists like Vermeer, Turner, Picasso, and a personal favorite of mine, Caravaggio. By the way, he passed away at the age of only 38, but left a legacy that we still remember today. I'm not sure where my artistic journey is going to lead me, but what I do know is that my breadcrumbs are 100% natural with no artificial colors. Thank you.